evening all. Certainly glad to have each of you online with us. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I would like for us to, for the next few minutes, consider a passage that I know that each of us are well acquainted with. It's taken from Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 27. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the, the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Now from these verses, we can note that when Jesus was old enough to decide for himself, he chose and he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. In so choosing, he gave up all the different things that Egypt had to offer him. This would include not just the sinful pleasures as mentioned in our text, but also a continued education and all the various riches that would be associated with being grandfather to the Pharaoh, a member of the royal family. Instead, he chose the suf to suffer the affliction given to the people of God, which was his extended family, the children of Israel. Now, why did he do this? We see that he did this because he esteemed the treasures of Egypt as less valuable than the reproach of Christ. We see that he also had respect unto the recompense of the reward, verse 26 of our text. We must not, or <clears throat> we must note that he had the proper fear that is, godly fear, instead of fearing Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Again, pointing to the fact that this would be his adoptive grandfather. Now, he endured all these different things because he sought after God and godly riches. But the phrase I would like for us to consider mainly tonight is the reproach of Christ. For we see in our text... Moses esteemed this reproach of Christ greater than the riches that Egypt had to offer. First, we must note that Moses was or is a type of Christ. Just what does this word Christ mean? It comes from the Greek word Christos, which is a generic term that simply means anointed one. It can thus be stated that Moses was God's anointed. He was a Christ. We see in Exodus chapters 3 through 4 that God called Moses and gave him a mission to follow. Moses was chosen and charged to bring the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity. We see from Acts chapter 7 verses 34 through 38 that Stephen there draws a comparison between Moses and Jesus. Again, Acts chapter 7, verses 34 through 38, which reads, I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I've heard their groaning, and then come down to deliver them, and now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had showed them the wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you or unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel, which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. 
So we see that both Moses and Jesus were prophets. After all, they both spoke the will of heaven. We see that they were both rulers or judges. Moses served as a judge over the people of Israel. And ultimately, Jesus is our final judge. We see that both worked miracles. And we see that both served as deliverers. Moses delivered physical Israel from physical bondage. Jesus is going is able to deliver those today from spiritual bondage. Thus, Moses is properly considered a Christ, an anointed one of God. Then we must consider that Moses endured or suffered reproach for being this Christ. What does it mean to have reproach? Reproach comes from the Greek word onidismos, which includes offensive, or offensive speech or offensive behavior, to defame, taunt, or revile. We can see throughout the life of Moses, specifically when he was discharged to deliver Israel, that he indeed suffered reproach. We see that he renounced all that Egypt had to offer. Again, our text, Hebrews 11, verses 24 through 27. He constantly battled the Israelites throughout their murmurings in the wilderness wandering. Exodus chapter 14, verses 11 and 12. Chapter 15, verses 22 through 25. Exodus chapter 16, verse 2, verses 7, 8, 9, as well as verse 12. Exodus, Exodus chapter 17, verse 3. Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Numbers chapter 14, verse 2, verse 27, verse 29, and verses 36 and 37. We see also that this people accused him of wrongdoing and wanted to commit a, a mutiny against him. Numbers chapter 16, verses 11 and 41. Numbers chapter 17, verses 5 and 10. Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. And Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Even his own siblings attempted to rebel against him. Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 through 15. Each of these things he experienced were directly related to the fact that he was God's anointed one. He was the leader charged with bringing out the Israelites and leading them through the wilderness. Now compare these things with what Jesus endured as Jesus the Christ. He gave up heaven to come to earth. All the glories of heaven, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. Although the mighty creator, he took the form of a servant. Not only did he become a human, but he became a carpenter. In spite of all the miracles that Jesus performed, most rejected him. John chapter 20, verses 30 through 31. Even his own brethren rejected him. John chapter 1, verse 11. John chapter 5, verse 40, chapter 6, verses 41 through 43, and John chapter 7, verse 5. And we know that ultimately Jesus, Son of God, Jesus the Christ, suffered crucifixion. Both of these men were anointed of God, and both of these men experienced reproach because they were a respective Christ. Now, what does this mean for us today? While we do not fulfill the role of Moses, nor that of Jesus, we are to be Christ-like. Jesus gives us the following warning in Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 through 25. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the city of, cities of Israel to the Son of Man become. 
The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Furthermore, he makes a similar statement in John chapter 15, verses 18 through 21, which reads, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I have said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for not my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Jesus plainly taught his disciples that they would need to endure different types of reproach. This is true because he was treated in the same way. Moses was treated the same way. This is to happen to each Christian because we are obedient to the will of Christ. We will suffer persecution simply for living as Christians. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. But what should our reaction be to such treatment, to such reproach? Because it is coming. What should we do? 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 16 show us exactly what we must do. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. We must not have an evil, an evil attitude in response to such treatment, to the reproach that we will face. Instead, we are to be glad, joyful, happy. Ultimately, we must glorify God because of these different things we experience. That's not necessarily an easy thing to do, but the more we work at it, it will become easier for us to do. As we wrap this up, we're told that the Old Testament was given for us to learn from, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. As such, we have considered Moses, who was a type of Christ, in light of Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 27. He indeed suffered reproach, or the reproach of Christ. Though not to the same extent, certainly similar to that of Jesus our Savior. When we suffer the reproach of Christ today, what will we do in response? Will we be like the Israelites of old who desired to return back to Egypt? Who would rather berate and reproach Moses and even God? Keep in mind that many of these Israelites were old enough to know the horrendous treatment they received. Yet they forgot it based on the treatment they had received in the wilderness. They didn't have the foresight that Moses did. Because remember, he kept in mind the, re the recompense of reward for being faithful to God. Will, or will we be like those Jews to whom the very book of Hebrews was written? Who wanted to return to the law of Moses? Will we uh, desire to return to the world? that we supposedly gave up when we were converted and became a Christian, we must not do so. Instead, we must have the attitude of Paul as found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11, which reads, 
But what things were gained to me, those I counted for or counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through uh, through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might, I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I hope this study has been beneficial to you. Thankful, thankful for your attention.